Black Saturday and Sunday, and he told us how much he made and how much is he charging. And me and Melissa goes, we are doing this way wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and so we decided, well, we're going to do it. And so he gave us the kind of the ingredients, and we just use our own stuff. And so now we're doing YouTube and Facebook stuff. And like she said, we kept it all to ourselves because we got tired of people stealing our ideas, which happens all the time, as you guys know. And I've been in the golf business a long time, and I've been very blessed. I, I worked under or with or took lessons from either Bob Toskey, Jimmy Ballard, Butch Harmon, Claude Harmon, Hank Haney, David Ledford. I've been around all of them. And it's amazing the silly drills that I came up with. They shit, hey, Larry, you have to try this show here. And I still in pretty good communication with Bob Toskey and Jimmy Ballard through emails and stuff like that. But the, uh, I always kind of kept it close-knit. I didn't want to share it. Well, Kurt says you need to share that information. I mean, Melissa goes, well, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try to change our way of thinking a little <laughs> bit. Um, instead of, uh, I guess the old saying would be, uh, what what did they say? Instead of work harder, work smarter. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so there you go. instead of giving that many lessons in a week, we're gonna try to see if we can narrow it down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, right now we're going from basically 5.30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, almost seven days a week. And so we're been doing that for five years. I bought the place five years ago. Okay. Melissa jumped in a couple other things for you. about year four. So we've been uh, full throttle ever since. It's fun. It has its um, moments of what are we doing, but it's <laughs> 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 We laugh, but we haven't really paid ourselves yet. All the money we make goes right back into the business. And um, we're trying to make improvements. When I first bought it, there was hardly any grass on the facility. And so now we're golf professionals who became agronomists overnight, it seems like. And so we've learned more about chemicals and waters and grass and weeds. And weeds, weeds that are weeds, the weed that we know is grass that's a weed. So we've learned more about that part of the golf industry than you can think about. But in a, in a great way, we enjoy getting out there 6 o'clock in the morning, hopping on a mower, and driving out there as we start cutting and watch the sun and Mother Nature unearth, you know. And we have a family of hawks out there. We have ungodly amount of deer. We get to watch them do their thing. Uh, how a hawk's breed is a very unusual thing. They're flying about a thousand feet in the air. He's up here, she's down here, and he's, te he's teasing him. And they mate for life. And she makes him woo her, him, her every year. Every season. Every season. <laughs> and he'll fly above her, and all of a sudden he attacks her. And they mate in midair as they're flying towards Earth. And all of a sudden they separate. We get to watch them this every year. They have two nests, and we get to watch the how they do their baby. We have um, a couple coyotes which are very friendly for if you ever read all this bad stuff about coyotes, but we had a geese problem out here. <clears throat> bad. Like over 400. And I try to do it the right way on every occasion, but I grew up on a farm and there's only one way to get rid of rodents. So I did it that way. And my coyotes got really fat. So one time I had three, I had eight, then all of a sudden now we're down to three. But um, <clears throat> the, uh, it's been, every day is a challenge in a great way. Um, every day is a challenge when we give a lesson in a great way. And um, I don't like a lot of the instructors you've seen on either on YouTube or on TV or in golf magazines. They have one philosophy one way to teach, one way to swing the golf club. I don't believe in that theory. Everybody swings differently, walks differently, talks differently, shaped differently. So with my eye, I've been very blessed with that. I can see, okay, their legs are this long and their upper body is this long. You can't swing the club like Melissa. You can't swing the club like you. So I find out their leverage point once we find out their leverage point, it's like swinging a hammer. How do you swing a hammer? So that's how I teach. 
Um, I use a lot of drills. We use a lot of mirrors. And uh, we use mirrors for, there's 8 billion people in the world. Think of all the technology you guys have seen. <clears throat> there's only three ways we learn. Visual, verbal, and kinetics. Kinetics is all feel, right? With all the technology, that's the only way we learn, right? There's only a half percent of the people that learn from me telling you what to do. You know why? Because we're all stubborn. <laughs> Every one of us, he don't know what he's talking about. I ain't listening to him. That's not what I read over there in that book. Well, that's that's where we're made up, right? So we can learn through mirrors, visual, and through kinetics, which is feel. And we do a little bit of both in the mirrors. And so in one way, we'll, we can take a horse to water, but we can't make you drink it, right? So that's kind of how we stumbled across a lot of this stuff. And I guess, what is this, our fourth season with Ollie? Our third, third or fourth one? And it's been fun. We've had a good time with it. And we've had several come back. And, and some of them haven't left. They come out and play golf every day, it seems like, and hit range ball. So it's a good thing. So we continue to do it because we've had a good time. And um, the first class, we had over 40. No, we had 25. 25, it was too big, wasn't it? And so we try to top it off right at 20, and it's kind of easier to manage. And as I said earlier, we're trying to work smarter, not harder. So. We do our best to make sure everyone gets individual attention. Yeah. It sometimes takes us a little bit to get to everybody. Well, I had an agenda, but he just walked right all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and he does that. He does that. That's why I can't let him be first. All right, go <laughs> first. I'll put myself in the corner. In some weird way, he just touched on pretty much everything on my list. But We'll, um, we'll slow down there. Uh, I did put our cell phone numbers here in the front if you want them. You are not bugging us by any means, but if you have questions, like you go home, or maybe you play golf tomorrow and you're like, oh, what was that? You know, or, or hey, I'm, I'm doing this, can you help? Um, you're not bugging us. It just, it might take us a little bit of time to get back to you, okay? Um, so there they are. Um, you pretty much got to know Larry. <laughs> uh, I'm Melissa. I um, I grew up in Delhi, went to Oak Hill, played at Xavier. Um, I live in Westchester now, so I did get out of the West Side. But um, which is unusual. <laughs> um, I've got three kids. They all play golf as well. I have a daughter at Lakota East on the varsity team. I have one in middle school, and then I have a son who's in fifth grade. Um, so my whole family pretty much does this and <laughs> plays golf. Um, most of you have seen Moby and Toby walking around. Um, Moby was adopted two years ago, or I'm sorry, Toby was adopted two years ago. Moby is a stray that just showed up about three months ago. Um, Moby's a little skittish. We don't know his background, um, but he's ours now. Um, I will tell you this, if you walk with an umbrella in your hand, he gets afraid. <laughs> All right, so if you just keep the golf clubs and the umbrellas to the side, he's really, really good. He's a sweetheart. He really is. Um, but Toby will... Toby doesn't care. He'll walk right up to you and sniff you and ask for treats and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you didn't already, there's coffee and donuts um, in the other room. The restroom is actually right behind me. You just walk around the corner past the TV on your right. There is a restroom down at the driving range um, if you need it when we go down there. Um, I did put out another agenda there for you. We're going to try to stick to it, but golf is an outdoor sport. Things could change, you know, the day we're supposed to putt or chip, it might be raining, so we might have to shift gears. Um, so if I were you, I would keep your whole bag in the trunk, but maybe just pull out the certain clubs for that day, and then that way, if we have to transition into something else, you still have it available. If anyone needs to borrow anything, we've got plenty of clubs. Um, I know, we, I think we've got, what, three lefties now? Thanks, Dawn. <laughs> Dawn's recruiting the lefties. Um, so, Please, we're pretty good about talking front and back and target side and trail side. So um, if you have a question, just let us know. Uh, any other housekeeping? We really don't have to cancel because we've got this room and our driving range is heated and covered. So unless the roads are just unpassable, we are good to go every week. Okay? Check um, your emails. Because if, if the roads are unpassable, we, we try to get the email we out. We throw an email out, hey, it's too crazy out. Because sometimes the last road they clean is yeah. 747 in Tri County Parkway, mm -hmm. and we don't want anybody to get hurt, which happened. Not they didn't get an accident, but we had too much ice, so 
Um, one other thing, if you have any injuries or any concerns over your body and making the golf motion, just let us know because that's what we're really good at. So if you need to make some accommodations, we will. Please don't feel bad about it. He makes about five accommodations every time he swings a golf club. So don't don't feel bad that your body's not quite cooperating, okay? Because we can we can make it work, all right? Um, so today we're going to talk about posture and setup and intentional practice. And I kind of wanted to start with the intentional practice part. And he kind of already jumped in there <laughs> with our mirrors and you got to do it and that kind of stuff. Um, but change can be scary. You know, we, we all fear change and we're kind of addicted to certainty. Like we don't want to know exactly what's going to happen, which come next week, everyone will expect to meet in here. And if we meet you somewhere else, you'll be off, off just a little bit because didn't, we didn't meet right in this room. Um, and we're not usually okay with not knowing what's going to happen. We all want that certainty. We want to know what's going to happen. Um, so what we're asking you is to try to trust in the learning process. Do it our way for the next eight weeks, all right? It's, it'll be different. We don't do it like anybody else, okay? So just try it on for size. But it takes a lot of courage to learn something new about yourself. So congratulations and welcome. And you might find out things about yourself that, ooh, I didn't want to really know that. But hey, that's awesome. You're going to learn some new stuff. Um, but it's only when we change the old habits and stop the old patterns that we can actually put the new in. So even if you're only opening your mind for one hour when you're with us, that is so much better than not opening your mind and your body to change at all. Okay? So hopefully we'll get some new stuff to filter in there. All right? Um, like he said, there's a that pyramid that I printed off there. And it's funny because that's actually what they gave us at Ollie. But basically the way others learn, people learn. Your best way is to go home and teach this to somebody else. Even if they don't play golf, say, hey, can you just listen to me for like 10 minutes and I'm going to tell you all about golf, okay? And if you can teach someone, you're going to learn so much faster, okay? The other way is, like Larry said, mirrors and drills and visualization. So if you can stand in a mirror, and it can be that $10 mirror from Walmart that's on the back of your bedroom door, you don't need a club. If you can get in front of the mirror and say, okay, this is my posture, that's what I look like. Okay, am I, are my shoulders over my toes? Do I have enough hip tilt? Um, you can even get in front of the mirror without a club and you can make some rotations, okay? But just watch yourself. And a lot of us struggle looking ourselves in the mirror, like actually looking at ourselves in the mirror. So understand, we're not judging, okay? We have a couple mirrors in here that are very flattering. <laughs> There are a couple that you're like, ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move away from this one. But just understand we're not judging what we see. We're just trying to learn. We're trying to feel what our body's feeling, learn where our positions are, okay? Um, but if you can really just start to look at yourself in the mirror when you're not brushing your teeth or just brushing your hair real quick, okay? Um, the only way to really improve the golf motion is to actually do the golf motion. Okay, so we're going to show you drills, we're going to show you exercises to help your body do it, but you have to actually swing a club, so sorry. <laughs> you actually have to do it. So even if it's in your backyard, like five swings before work, or five swings when you get home at night, or five swings at lunchtime, you're actually doing it, and that's okay. We're not saying hit 200 balls, because if you hit 200 golf balls, and you're not paying attention to what you're doing, that is so much worse than if you do five swings and you're really in tune. Okay, so if your brain can only handle five, do five. If your brain can handle 80, do 80, but be careful. Let's not go through the motion. So that goes okay. into two stories. One, <laughs> one story is that when you're practicing, which I hope, maybe Melissa, both of you will get out there to practice. If we give you five drills, don't try to do all five drills or all five things at one time. Take five balls, I'm gonna only work on this one. Then take the next five balls, and I'm gonna work on this one. And the reason why, I befriended Arnold Palmer. I played a lot in his skin game when I was on and off the tour down in Orlando. One day he knew I was working with another couple of guys and he goes, hey Larry, why don't you come up? We're drinking a beer in his office with another guy. And we're sitting, he goes, hey Larry, Jack, I want you to watch this uh, reel to reel video of Albert Einstein taking a golf lesson. Okay, well there's this golf pro and here's Albert Einstein taking a golf lesson. And the golf professional gave him one or two things to work on, and he's hitting it pretty good. And the golf professional keeps adding a couple other things, and Albert goes, hang on a minute, with this little scrawny little voice, you know? And he picks up two golf balls and throws it up, and the golf professional catches him and says, hey, that's pretty good. He reaches down and grabs five or six of those up in the air, and the golf professional goes like that, and he goes, 
I might be considered the smartest man in the world, but I can only work on two things at once. Don't overload my brain. <laughs> so it's called paralysis by analysis. If we get too much information in there, we can't really move, right? So when you practice, like she said, five balls, just work on those five things, those one thing, that one thing on those five, and another thing on the next five balls. So it's easier on the brain. Was there a second story? <laughs> okay. Um, smart, smart. So the uh, crazy part about your central nervous system is if we don't have balance and functionality, it will kind of shut down. So golf is a very complex activity. Over 300 muscles are in motion all at the same time, which is kind of crazy. So understand if we're doing um, something simple like maybe some half swings and you're kind of like, I want to hit driver, I want to hit driver. We, do, we all do, but hitting a driver is a lot compl more complex motion than just hitting some half swings. So if our brain can't handle the balance and the stability of hitting a half swing, it's not going to be ready for a driver. Okay, so baby steps. And like you saw on the agenda, there is, there's a driver on there. We are going to hit drivers, okay? But we got to get our central nervous system on board. So basic things like working on your balance at the gym or even just walking or maybe some of you are into yoga or riding bikes and stuff like that, that's all going to help us with our golf body, okay? So anything you can do like that. Um, the other thing, the mirror work. The slower you go, the better it is for your body. So if you get in front of a mirror and you're like, wait, there's one, Melissa said five, two, three, four, five, your, your body's actually going to work better if you're like, okay, here's my setup, and I'm just going to take it back to here, and I'm going to look, and then I'm going to take it to here, and I'm going to look, and then here. That doesn't mean you can't pick up speed, but do it in slow motion. Let your body learn and adapt, and it actually will change your brain. It's going to change the way your brain thinks just by moving your body, okay? All right. Any questions about that part? Come on now, you guys are Ollie people. I know there's a <laughs> So we're going to jump in with posture, okay? I know posture setup seems really boring, but 90% of your swing falls can be changed by your posture, okay, or your setup. So when we talk about posture, it's the way your body stands before we hit a golf ball, okay? Um, golf gets a pretty bad rap as far as destroying people's backs and stuff from the shoulders and the knees and stuff like that. But if we do it properly, and if you communicate with us, we can get you in a setup position that doesn't hurt your body, okay? So our or whole goal, swing, yeah. yeah, our whole goal is to get your skeleton to support itself. So when we stand up tall, our skeleton is supporting our feet are underneath our hips, our shoulders are over our hips. And so on. But if I stand like this, I'm not going to be able to do it for a real long time because my skeleton is no longer supporting my upper body. That requires muscles, tendons, ligaments, all that good stuff. So I'm going to let Larry get into his golf posture. When he gets into golf posture, the whole idea is that he is supporting himself from his feet all the way up. So get in your golf what posture. What side? What side? What view? What view? Just stay flat with. Okay. <laughs> so what I try to do... I try to stand like this, even when I go practice, even when I'm playing in tournaments, I kind of do this. I do it so fast, though, you don't realize it. I try to get my feet in line. So I take my shoulders over my hips, my hips over my knees, and my knees over my feet. So I should be skeleton-wise in good spot. Then all I try to do is just let my butt go backwards and my shoulders go forwards. So when he tilts forward, his shoulders are now over his toes. His rear end is back over his heel, okay? But his center of gravity is right here in the middle, all right? <coughs> now, in this position, his skeleton is pretty much supporting him still. He's got some muscles working. His core is now engaged, okay? But he's not really putting much stress on his body. If I move his hands out away from his body, this is going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on his low back, okay? There's a perception in golf that our arms need to be out here reaching, okay? And that our weight's on our heels and we're like this. Problem is that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on your body, it's gonna hurt, okay? The other thing is this takes his core muscles out of play now, all right? His core is no longer engaged. Our core muscles, our stomach, our back, our glutes, our hamstrings, our quads, that's what we're gonna hit the golf ball with. Those are our big muscles. That's what we're gonna to use to hit the golf ball, okay? If he tries to hit with his bicep, golf ball's not gonna go nearly as far as if he can try to get his whole body engaged, okay? And he's gonna hurt. He's really gonna hurt, okay? 
So when we look at you and we say, get closer to the gospel, get closer, I feel strong, I can't, you know? You actually have plenty of room. If we start here, okay, you should be able to return to here and impact, all right? However, most people work Great their job. hands out away from their body, okay? And we have a few that actually get closer to their body, and this is what they're afraid of, okay? We're afraid of getting our, in our own way. But if we start here, we should be able to return to here, provided we stay in our posture. Okay, and that's the hard part. Okay? Yeah, Miss Pat. Um, now you're talking about that posture. Is that for every club? The same? Every, for every club. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, every club. So even with driver, this is when we really start to notice people start reaching. Your driver still needs to be low here with the hands. Okay? You will be farther away from the golf ball because of the length of the club. But you're going you're gonna to be in this same setup position. This is a very strong position. Okay, So if I were to walk up and just try to push Larry over, he's pretty strong. But if Larry starts getting on his heels, okay, or if he starts reaching, he's in a weak position. Okay. How many guys swing and fall off balance? Because you're either reaching for the golf ball or too close to the golf ball. Okay. Yeah, I know we do these pirouettes. <laughs> It's funny, you know, we talked about taking care of the tea boxes. We see, we see <laughs> evidence of pirouettes on the tea box when we go to Cuddo. It's so funny. We're like, I'm playing in a tournament and I know who's playing before me. And I look down, I'm like, man, they've got bad footwork, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's evidence. You leave evidence behind. <laughs> All right? So, please, when we say get closer, there's a reason why. We're, we don't want you to feel crowded, and you will get used to it. Just stay there. Just stay. All right? And you'll you'll find it just stay so um, that all goes back to another story i'm sorry one more. <laughs> go ahead that. flat footed to set up your your feet are flat you're not we're towards the balls of your feet so you're a little more you forward are, yeah, yeah so it's kind of like a um defensive position okay um with our wedges we're going to be pretty neutral as far as right to left and front and back but once we get to like our eight iron, we want to have more weight loaded in that back leg, about 80% in your back leg, all right? The 80% stays there during your entire back swing, and then after impact, we're going to shift our weight into our forward leg. Keyword, after. After, after impact. After. Impact. We're trying to keep our spine behind the golf ball. I know it sounds funny, but if you're throwing a baseball to someone, you don't like excessively lean forward, all right? You stay behind it, and you release it, and then you follow it. Okay, the same in golf. Right. Story. So, talking about distance from the golf ball. So I watched Jimmy Bowler give a golf lesson one time. I'm down here hitting range balls, and this person was like way out of here all the time. I just trying, I hate. I feel so much stronger from there. And Jimmy Bowler and Bob Toski taught the same place, and they're they're pretty eccentric when you argue with them. <laughs> He goes, hang on one minute. I'll be right back. He goes down in a maintenance block, comes back with a 50-pound bag of fert, fertilizer. He goes, stick your arm straight out. Hold him out here, put that 50 pounds. He goes, whoa! He goes, I thought you were strong, but they could hit it far. He goes, well, put your arm right here close to your side. He put the 50 pound right here, and he goes, I guarantee you can throw that bag of sand or fertilizer as far as you want that way. He couldn't throw it from here. He put it right here. Now he could use his core and his body to help him throw that bag of 50 pounds. Put the 50 pounds out here, he was falling off weight, couldn't throw it. So, always remember, I'm that Ballard guy. You say you can't do so, wait a minute now. <laughs> and then understand your body proportions um, affect that setup position. So if you have really long arms, you might actually, um, look like you're crouched over more, yeah. but you're really not. So we're looking basically 42 to 46 degrees of tilt, which you don't need to know that part. But um, when you look around that someone has really long legs, they may look like they're standing taller than that. They still do have that tilt, okay? Just understand that it's their body proportions. None of us are the same. So it might look different to someone else, but we're, our goal is to get those shoulders over your toes. And that's something you can do in the mirror. Just there, like, okay, my shoulders are right over my head. Can you, can you tell right now the organized one is enough? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, 
Another note, if your upper back is rounded, it will put pressure on your low back. So when we get set up, I, I call it like feeling you're high in your chest. You're still tilted forward, but our chest feels high because we want to try to keep our upper back straight. And I understand 40, 50 years of maybe sitting behind a desk or driving a car and all that kind of stuff, it's, we tend to go this way. So there are exercises we can help with that, but your goal is to feel tall here. Now, the other thing is bifocals, okay? So we we want to try to feel like we're looking over the golf ball, but I understand what you might be wearing on your eyes or in your eyes might affect that. So that's where we just have to tinker, okay? There's really no right or wrong. We're just trying to make you more efficient in what you do. Um, the other thing with our feet, we want to, with our forward foot, it receives about four to five times your body weight and that forward knee and hip on our way through, okay? So we like to turn the toes out so that you've got space to do that and take pressure off of your hip and knee. So that's why Tiger blew out his knee, what, 19 or 2004, He's blown out three times because his front foot was square. Okay, and his, he's got... You know, he's got his body weight, but his momentum into the golf ball is a little bit different than ours. Okay? <laughs> Once you play golf now, his front foot's flared out 25 to 30 degrees. And again, we're not Tiger's age, but if you look at all the senior players, watch their front foot. That front foot is flared out almost 30 degrees, so that allows their hip and take the pressure off their knee when they go through. So we do need to finish, we need to follow through, all right? Okay. Um, we can also make accommodations with the feet if we have maybe a trouble rotating, say on the way back. So if Larry's struggling with his rotation, which he tends to do, his right side is um, up. struggling a little bit. So when he gets set up, he might pull his back foot back so that he can actually turn bigger, okay? Just the opposite, if he's having trouble with his left side getting through to the target, He'll pull his left foot back and try to work through the target. So we have a lot of people say, I can't rotate, I can't rotate. Well, we might be able to pull your back foot back, and now you can make a bigger turn, okay? Understand, men, your hips are t generally tighter than ours, okay? They have a different purpose, and that's okay, all right? Also, the hip, there's a muscle deep on the inside. It wasn't meant to slide and rotate. It can rotate or it can slide, but it can't do both at the same time. So it will lock up, okay? So what we mean by slide is when your center, right? You can think of your heart, you can think of your sternum, whatever you think of, when your center moves off the golf ball, either during your back swing or your forward motion, that's a slide or a sway, all right? We want our center over the golf ball as long as possible. That's where our power is gonna be, right? This is your hitting area. This is where all your power is. And if we move off of that, we're gonna lose efficiency. Okay. That doesn't mean we're all perfect and we can stay over there all the time. But the better I can stay here and make my motion, the better shot I'm going to hit. But don't keep your head down. <laughs> how, many time, how many times have you guys heard that? Keep your head down. Yeah. Keep your head down. Yeah. Turn around and kick that person right in the butt. <laughs> 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 the head is not meant to stay down. The head is meant to swivel. Because it's on your spine. It's on it your wants spine. To go where it's your meant spine to goes. swivel. The only thing that's looking at the golf ball is your eyeballs, not your head. So does this look natural to you guys? Guys, I guarantee you guys seen people swing out. Keep your head down. The head is meant to swivel so I can move through the shot. Okay? So the head is not meant to stay down. It's meant to swivel. Your eyeballs know where the golf ball is. Chances are if we're still topping it or hitting behind it, that's because your center is moving off. Yeah, this. Okay, uh, not your head, but your center is moving. Which hopefully our head is on our center. <laughs> not always. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go into grip. Our goal is to get your dominant hand to do most of the work. Okay. So you know whether you're right-handed and choosing to play left-handed, or you're left-handed and choosing to play right-handed, or you're right-handed playing right-handed, we want that dominant hand taken over. That's your strength. Okay, um, so that's our goal, get the dominant hand working, all right? Um, the interlock grip, Jack Nicklaus was a proponent, Tiger Woods is a proponent. They did not like to see their golf ball move from right to left, or a draw or a hook, however you want to look at it, okay? So they interlocked their pinky finger and their forefinger 
so that they would always hit the ball left to right. Okay? Now, Nicholas, when in his heyday, everyone was listening to every single thing he said. So everyone adopted this interlock grip, but it's not really good for everybody. Okay? Especially so, if you have a problem hitting it to the if you're right-handed and you hit it to the right or lefty and you hit it left, and we don't like if you don't like that shot. <laughs> You get to choose your shot, by the way. You get to choose which way it goes. You just have to let us know what your eyeball right. likes, okay? Um, so we usually start everyone out with 10 finger, okay? Which is everything in a row. Or you might overlap, okay? You can overlap your pinky over your forefinger. Those both use your dominant hand to hit the golf ball, okay? Um, however, if you, if, you, if you choose a shot shape, and it's not quite working for you, we'll, we'll play with your grip a little bit and see if, if you like that better, okay? No one likes grip changes. Nobody. It's our feel, okay? Grip changes are hard, okay? So it might require you sitting at the dinner table or watching TV and just putting your hands on the club for a couple minutes every night, like, okay, that's where I want my hands, that's where I want my hands. And you will have to practice your grip change, all right? If, if, we don't, if you don't hit a golf ball before next Wednesday, and we made a grip change, it might be difficult next Wednesday because we'll have to kind of redo it again, okay? So that goes back to practice, but understand grip changes are difficult and we understand that and we try, we almost avoid it unless we really, really have to change it, all right? Um, so be patient with those. But that goes back to the shot shape. Eventually we're gonna learn how to create whatever shot you wanna hit, but you have to let us know what you see Okay, so my golf ball goes really high, his doesn't. So when I see a shot, I always see high. He sees more of like a medium trajectory, okay? It's a lot easier for him to hit a low shot than it is for me. Doesn't mean I can't, but it's harder. Um, everyone has their own idea of what they want their golf ball to do. So you just have to let us know what that is and we'll try to get your body to help you with it, okay? So there's no right or wrong. You know, Pat's husband isn't here today, but I'm sure he has an idea of of how her golf ball should go. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next week when they play, she's gonna be like, Melissa said not to listen to you. So I know, I wish she was here. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. So understand it's personal. Yeah. Um my husband can well it depends too on the type of club you're using. It can. Whether you're up or go like that. You got it. Yep. So but you don't change your career. Correct. Correct. Unless, unless we want to, there are ways to change your grip to make a drastic swing change for like a shot, let's say we have to hit around a tree or whatever, but for the most part, 99% of the time, you're going to have your hands on the club the same way every time. Okay, yep, but you're right. Depending on what club you have, we'll determine how high it goes, all that good stuff. Yep, perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, um, ball position. Our job is to try to stay over our golf ball as long as possible. Okay, so that's that means our center is over the golf ball. So when we turn turn back, if I'm over here, I'm not over the golf ball anymore, it's gonna be really difficult to get back to my golf ball. We want that golf ball a little forward of center, okay? Because we wanna be moving into the through ball. the ball, into the ball, okay? If I play my golf ball too far back, it's likely I'm gonna fall back and off my shot, okay? So we always try to put our golf ball, okay, where is my chest? How am I gonna stay over this shot? And for the most part, it's forward of center, okay? And then our driver will be way out towards your front foot, okay? Front heel, sometimes there, front big toe, depending on yeah. your swing knee. There, okay. There's occasion where we put the ball back. If it's in a divot under the trees or we're trying to hit it really low, but the ball needs to be left of center so we can move into the golf ball. So I just want to say, so yep. every time, every iron I'm swinging, I should have it just forward we're gonna, set. We're going to call it 95%. The grass is going to tell us what to do ultimately. I know. Pat probably remembers this. I have, there's no like black or white answer. It's like, well, what's the ground telling you to do? Yeah, but for the most part, especially when we're down hitting on the mat and you can create your own lie, <laughs> or when we're out in the grass and you can create your own lie, it's going to be forward to center. Yeah. Even when you're shipping? I always thought it was. No. Depends what kind of chip shot you're hitting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the sand wedge chip shot we use like 90 percent of the time it's going to be forward but again the grass might determine something different but if we're going to hit something low and running okay so your back foot is going to allow you to roll a shot your front foot is going to allow you to get it up in the air 
Does that help? So if you're right-handed, sorry, if you're right-handed, right for roll, left for loft. Doesn't work. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, right for roll, left for loft. I like I like to show this, and it might be hard for everybody to see this, but if I put my feet together, <coughs> the ball's right in the middle of my stance, right? So if I move both feet, did the ball position move? Yeah. Didn't did. Put my feet together. I'm just going to move my right foot. Did the ball position change? Yeah. It did? Oh. I made you Did the ball position change? No. The ball position never changes 95% of the time. Once we're in the center, and I like to explain this, I only I move my back foot and move my left foot just to kind of flare it out. That's where my ball is almost every time when I chip, when I putt, when I the driver's the only one for me that moves up in my stance. The rest of them stay pretty close to there. Now, I'm not as far forward as she is. My legs are a little bit longer than Melissa's. So that changes just what we call a turn of the golf ball. But overall, when I hit a chip shot, and Melissa said it, the ground dictates it, the grass dictates it. So if we can understand the only way to repeat ourselves is to do the same thing over and over and over again. That means the golf ball has to be in the same position every time. Right? So if the golf ball's moving and you're moving it back in your stance, oh, that's the right way because they told me to play it back. That's what I read in the book. That's what Samson E told me to do. Play it back in my stance. Oh, the 7 iron is supposed to be here and the 6 iron is supposed to be here. Well, how can you repeat anything if you're constantly moving the ball around in your stance. Do you know how many balls you actually have to hit to create perfect rhythm and timing to move that ball around like that? Probably close to 2,000 balls a day. I don't think your bodies can handle it. Two, I don't think your mind can handle it. And three, I don't think you have the time to do it. Right? The greatest player in the world is Jack Nicklaus. Why? Because he's won more than anybody else in majors, right? Still in my mind. I think Tiger is a close second until he beats Nicholas's record. Nicholas said, every ball plays from the same position except for my driver, left to center. It's the easiest way to repeat what I'm trying to do. I swing my driver like my sand wedge and my sand wedge like my driver. You guys understand that statement? The only way to repeat itself is to be in the same position every time. And I know what you guys read, I know what you watch on the Golf Channel, I know what you hear, I know what you heard before. That's why we're different. But one, that's why we're so good at what we do, because we understand all the good stuff and the bad stuff with it. The brain. Not the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go hit some golf balls. We're just starting out with half swing, okay, and then we'll work up to a full swing. The reason we brought wedge has the most loft. It's usually the easiest golf club for us to get in the air and kind of see what's going on with our body. Um, so what I mean by half swings is you're going to get set up and we're probably going to come around and tweak little things like get closer, do this, do that. And you're just going to swing it back. If you're a clock person, I'm not a clock person, but three o'clock to nine o'clock. Okay. I'm more um, hips, rib cage, shoulder type of person. So I swing it back to my hip, right? And then follow through to my hip on the other side. I get laughing. I said, did you get through all the way to your shoulder that time? Oh, that's amazing, <laughs> the awareness that we have or don't have, okay? <laughs> so our job is to um, take some half swings, and then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and make it bigger. But let's we're going to figure out some posture, some setup type stuff, um, tempo. Tempo matches your personality. His is pretty fast and hard. Mine's more even and, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But it matches your personality. So if you're trying to swing like someone that you aren't, we're going to see it real quick. You'll be off balance and your tempo will be really bad. Okay? So um, if he tries to swing like me, he can get away with it, but it's not pretty. All right? If I try to swing like him, I'm probably going to be off balance, falling over. Okay? So stick to you. Pat, be you. <laughs> All right? So we're going to get some golf balls. Our driving range is down the hill. Um, Find a partner. Yeah, we'll partner up. We're going to hit about five shots and then switch, okay? That way we get some downtime to kind of think about what we're doing and we don't rock it there, okay? Because then our brain's not involved. Can, and can we get them to do about three minutes of 
Well, we're going to stretch when we get down yeah, there because you've been sitting for a while. So when we get down there, we'll stretch just a little bit. Okay? Show me right away. Any questions? Does anybody need to borrow a cup today? Are we good? And there's more coffee and donuts. I don't think that's going to be I'm Gail, by the way. I'm Debbie. Debbie, nice to meet you, too. So I'm going to stay here and work out. Your tie's been a long way. I know. Good God. Let's see where it is. Yeah. I would. Yeah. 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 Yeah.